Leah here from LeahFirstSci.com and in this video we're going to look at the reaction and mechanism for aldol addition and condensation. The names are often interchanged but there is a slight difference between an aldol addition and a condensation. This is an ideal reaction for creating a brand new carbon to carbon single bond so that you can create bigger molecules with more functional groups. An aldol addition will start out using an aldehyde or a ketone, here we have an aldehyde, and react under acidic or basic conditions to give us a beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone. In this case, we have a beta hydroxy aldehyde. And that's because the carbonyl is zero, the alpha carbon is just a CH2, and the beta carbon has an OH or hydroxy group. In the aldol condensation, the reaction starts out the same way, but because we're reacting this at higher temperatures, we have a dehydration at the final step, and so the OH is gone with a pi bond sitting between the alpha and beta carbon. This gives us the alpha-beta unsaturated product. If you look closely, you'll see that my reactants only have two carbons, but the products each have four. How do you create a four carbon product when you're only starting with two? Keep in mind that even though you're given one aldehyde, your beaker contains thousands and millions of starting molecules, and so they react with each other. Unless you have a mixed reaction, then you can get a cross aldol, but we'll start with a simple self-attack to understand this mechanism. Since this reaction is more common with base, that's how we'll start, and we'll use a strong base NaOH. Remember that NaOH is an Na plus positive spectator, so you get rid of it, and OH minus, which is a very strong base. In the first enolate video, we talked about the acidity of an alpha hydrogen when it can resonate onto the carbonyl. If you're not comfortable, go back to that video first. Here we're going to run straight through the mechanism. The OH minus is a strong base, and we'll use its lone pair of electrons to reach out for and grab that acidic alpha hydrogen. The electrons are left behind, and so they'll collapse not just onto the carbon, but we'll show the direct resonance where the electrons collapse onto the carbonyl oxygen. Oxygen had two lone pairs, now it has a third lone pair with a negative charge and a pi bond between the carbonyl and alpha carbon. The OH- drifts away as a water molecule in solution. This is the reactive enolate intermediate. Since we have many carbonyls in solution, in the next step we'll attack another aldehyde. The carbonyl carbon is partially positive because the pi electrons can resonate onto oxygen. This partial positivity makes it very electrophilic. This is going to invite something negative to attack. What is that negative? The enolate ion, but specifically the carbon atom. To do that, we have to show the electrons collapsing down from oxygen onto carbon, and then instead of showing the resonance where the pi electrons collapse onto carbon and then attack, we're going to show this in one step so that the electrons attack the carbonyl carbon, creating a brand new carbon to carbon bond. The green carbon has too many bonds, and so we have to kick out the pi bond onto the oxygen atom. This is where students get confused, so let's redraw it carefully exactly as we see it. The first molecule had a hydrogen attached to two carbon atoms. We had a single bound oxygen and a pi bond that formed when the electrons collapsed back down for the attack. Oxygen now has two lone pairs and the carbonyl is reformed. We have a new bond that forms from the alpha carbon to the carbonyl carbon of the green molecule, and so we'll show the green molecule as two carbons attached to the alpha carbon. The green molecule now has just a single bond to oxygen with an extra lone pair and a negative charge. We have our addition product, but we want to make it neutral. Don't forget that NaOH is dissolved in water, and that means we have lots of H2O floating around in solution. The negative oxygen will reach out and grab a hydrogen from a nearby water molecule, giving oxygen back its electrons. The electrons that reached out for the water now sit as a single bond between oxygen and hydrogen for a neutral alcohol on the green portion of the molecule. If we count this, carbonyl carbon is ground zero, the carbon next to it is alpha and then beta. We have an alcohol beta to the aldehyde for a beta hydroxy aldehyde. We also get another OH- floating around the solution, which is our catalyst reformed so that it can now go and attack another aldehyde and another one and another one. 
the reaction would stop here under cold conditions, but if we add in heat, the reaction will continue for a dehydration. Don't forget that the alpha carbon has two hydrogen atoms, and given that it's alpha to a carbonyl, it is considered somewhat acidic. But the question is, what happens as a result of heat? Well, we have an OH minus in solution that will be greedy and reach out for that hydrogen atom. But instead of resonating the remaining electrons towards the carbonyl carbon, it will move towards the beta carbon to form a pi bond between the alpha and beta. This puts too many bonds on the beta carbon, and so the OH group winds up getting kicked out. Redrawing everything exactly as we see it, we now have one fewer hydrogen on the alpha carbon, but we don't show hydrogens in skeletal structure. We have a pi bond between the alpha and beta carbon, and once again we have another OH- in solution. And what about the OH- that did the attack? This is floating around as a water molecule in solution, and this is where we get the concept of dehydration. We removed H and OH to dehydrate the molecule, and that's how we got the pi bond between alpha and beta for an alpha-beta unsaturated product. This reaction is slightly different under acidic conditions, because without a strong base like OH-, we need something else to drive this reaction forward. Anytime we have a carbonyl reacting in acid, we first have to activate that carbonyl by protonating. The oxygen will use its lone pair to reach out for hydrogen and grab a proton of H3O+. Remember, acid and water is H plus and H2O, which we're simply showing as H3O+. The resulting intermediate has an oxygen with three bonds, one lone pair, and a positive charge. Under basic conditions, a strong base was able to deprotonate the alpha carbon, but under acidic conditions, resonance allows for the deprotonation of the alpha carbon. Take a look at the alpha hydrogen sitting on this molecule. Something as weak as water can come in and grab that hydrogen because it's not going to result in a negative charge. Instead, the electrons that bind hydrogen to the alpha carbon will immediately resonate towards the oxygen. The electrons between carbon and oxygen get kicked up onto oxygen, but we're still in a neutral situation. We are not forming an O- in acidic conditions. An O- will only form in basic conditions. Redrawing it exactly as we see it, we now have a pi bond between the carbonyl and alpha carbon, a single bond between carbon and oxygen, which has the initial lone pair, the brand new lone pair from the pi bond, and a hydrogen atom to form our neutral, less stable enol molecule. In basic conditions, the next step was to attack another aldehyde, but if we do that here, we're going to get a negative oxygen, and that cannot happen under acidic conditions. Instead, we have to first activate another aldehyde by having its oxygen reach out for a proton and get a positive charge, just like our starting molecule. Having a positive charge on the oxygen activates this molecule because oxygen does not like positivity as much as carbon. When it was neutral, there was resonance. Oxygen pulled on those electrons a little bit. But now that oxygen is positive, it is desperate to compensate for that positive charge with more electron density. And so it's going to pull on these electrons even more, making that carbonyl carbon even more partially positive. And this is what drives the next step of the reaction. The enol oxygen electrons will collapse back down to form a carbonyl, and the pi electrons will jump onto carbon and then reach out and attack that even more partially positive carbonyl carbon. The blue carbon has too many bonds, and so its pi bond is now kicked up as a lone pair onto oxygen. But it doesn't form a negative oxygen, it goes from positive to neutral. The charge goes down by one in either case. Let's redraw this exactly as we see it. The purple molecule had a single bond between carbon and oxygen and the green hydrogen atom. It had two lone pairs, but one of them was used to create a pi bond between carbon and oxygen, giving oxygen a positive charge. We have a new bond between the alpha carbon and the former carbonyl carbon of the blue molecule, which now has just a single bond between carbon and oxygen, and oxygen also has a hydrogen atom, and two lone pairs, so it's neutral. Our goal is to have a neutral product, and so we bring a water molecule from solution to remove that proton, give oxygen back its electrons, and remove that positive charge. 
This gives us the beta hydroxy aldehyde, same as we saw under basic conditions. This reaction will go further if we add heat, because we want to kick out that alcohol to form an alpha beta unsaturated molecule. But we can't kick out an OH- under acidic conditions, so the first step once again is to protonate the alcohol. We still have lots of H3O plus floating around in solution, and so the oxygen will grab a hydrogen, give the hydronium back its lone pair of electrons. We now have an oxygen with two hydrogen atoms, a lone pair, and a positive charge, which turned our bad OH leaving group into a good OH2 plus leaving group. What's the spark that makes it leave? That alpha proton. Another water molecule in solution will reach for that alpha hydrogen and cause the electrons between itself and carbon to collapse towards that protonated alcohol, kicking it out. This gives us the alpha beta unsaturated final product, just like we saw in basic conditions. Here's a neutral water molecule that was our leaving group, and here's the reformed hydronium acid catalyst. If you understand this mechanism, that's only the first step. But if you see this on an exam, you do not have the time to go through this step by step to come up with the products. And that's why in the next video, I'm going to show you an awesome trick for quickly getting the product of an alkyl condensation, whether acidic or basic conditions. You can find this entire video series along with my Enolate practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website layerforsci.com slash Enolate.